So let's do algebraic equations now. So let's start with a quick introduction so that even if you don't know much right now about algebraic equations, in just few minutes from now, you will know a lot about them. Well, in fact, you'll feel like an expert yourself. So can you tell me what is an algebraic equation? Like if I write 4x minus 8 and ask you, what is that? So I'm sure you would say that since an equal to sign is missing, so it must be an algebraic expression. But then, if I put it equal to something, let's say, if I put it equal to 0, then it becomes an algebraic equation. Now, let's say if I ask you that, is this an algebraic expression or an algebraic equation? So, I'm sure that you would say that since this tail is missing, so it must be an algebraic expression. Look at that expression on its face. To make it into an algebraic equation, we just have to So now it is the algebraic equation. See, this is an algebraic expression and you put it stale and it becomes an algebraic equation. I hope it's very clear now, the difference between the algebraic expression and the algebraic equation. Let me give you a very interesting fact. Human mind always stores information as images, not words. Thus, I try to give you as many images as possible while explaining new things. This way, you'll never forget what you're learning. So now let us see what are the different parts of an equation. This alphabet part that you are seeing here, it is called a variable. It is the most important part of any algebraic equation because its value is unknown. The entire purpose of having this algebraic equation is to find a suitable value for this x. So now can you label this minus 8 for me? It is called a constant. Now as you can imagine, it is called a constant because it has a fixed value. See, this 8 will remain an 8, come what may. It cannot become 5, it cannot become 6 or take any other value. It will remain constant. Whereas this x, it can take any suitable value. It can vary, it can change and that is why it is called a variable. See, it makes perfect sense. By the way, this 0 is also a constant. So now just one more part is left. So can you tell me the name of this 4? What do you call it? Right, it is called the coefficient. One very important thing to note here is that, that the operation in between this coefficient and this variable is always multiplication. There is an invisible multiplication sign in between. Please always remember that. By the way, that is meant to be unknown. So now tell me, how to solve an equation? Now this is a linear equation. And any equation has two sides, LHS and RHS. LHS means left hand side and RHS means right hand side. Like a tennis court, it has two sides. See, the left hand side and the right hand side. So basically, all the variables, they live on one side and all the constants and the coefficients, they live on the other side. Like this side belongs to only the variables. And on the other side, all the constants and coefficients live. 
see such an interesting match is going on with Roger Federer on one side and Rafael Nadal and Maria Sharapova on the other. So let's find out who's going to win. Now here you can see that all the players they are standing on one side. So we have to take this thing to the other side that is this constant as well as this coefficient to the other side and we are done. In every game there are some rules to be followed. So let's find out what are the rules of this game, the mathematical lawn tennis. Rule number one is when the side is changed, the sign of the operation with respect to the variable also changes. Basically it becomes opposite of what it was. Let's say it is plus on this side. Then when it's going to go to the other side, it will become minus. If it's minus, it will become plus. See, it becomes opposite of what it was. Using the same logic, if it's times, that is multiplication, it will become division. And if it's division, it will become multiplication. So the rules are very simple. Let's start the game. So let's take this minus 8 to the other side. Now as you can see that the operation with respect to the variable is minus. So when it goes to the other side, it will become plus 8. And now is the turn of this coefficient to go to the other side. Now, since this 4 is being times with this x, so when it goes to the other side, it will get divided. So we simply put x equal to 8 over 4. Since 4 2 times is 8, this means x equal to 2 and this equation is solved and with that the game is over so can you tell me what are the different types of equations like if you are trying to classify them on the basis of the highest power of variable then it can be a linear equation let me give you an example This is the same equation we saw a few moments back and here you can see that the highest power of x is 1. So any equation which has the highest power of variable as 1 will be called the linear equation. So I'm sure now you can easily guess what quadratic equations are. Any equation which has the highest power of the variable as 2 will be a quadratic equation. Let me put down an example for you. So as you can see that the highest power of variable is 2. Though there is another x which has 1 as the power. But we are not concerned with that. We are just concerned with the highest power of variable. So obviously 2 is the higher power. Then the third type would be a cubic equation. And I am sure by now you must have guessed it. That here the highest power must be cube that is 3. The highest power is 3 for a cubic equation. So you must have realized by now that everything in mathematics follows a smooth pattern. And once we recognize that pattern, then everything else falls into its place. That is the beauty of mathematics. See? 1, 2, 3. Can you spot the pattern? So now let's look at the fourth type of equation. That is disguised quadratic equations. Let me give you an example. You will be really surprised to know that even this equation is a quadratic equation but it is disguised or hidden. You can say that it is working undercover like James Bond and the name of this disguised quadratic equation is bi-quadratic equation. Even this equation is a quadratic equation, but it is disguised. And this particular type is called trigonometric quadratic equations. The equations can also be classified based on the number of variables, like this equation, 
Now, as you can see, here there are two variables, x and y. So, in order to solve this equation, we need at least one more equation in x and y. Like this. Now, we can easily find the values of x and y. And that is why these equations are also called system of equation. So now you have had a bird's eye view of what we would be learning in the next videos. So now quickly load the next video.